Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode with me, Shashank Gurupan. In today's episode, we are going to understand the difference between Bajaj Finance and Bajaj FinServ. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking me to do this deep dive analysis of what is better, what is Bajaj Finance, what is Bajaj FinServ, how does that entire holding structure work, and what do we invest for in the future? So, some lot of questions are there with respect to these two things. The market usually calls them the Bajaj twins, but we'll try to understand and go deep into what are these two companies and how do they operate. Okay, so stay tuned. We're going to have a very deep, insightful episode today. Stay tuned. Okay, so quickly let's go through it one by one. We'll go through one company at a time. First one is what is Bajaj Finance. Now, Bajaj Finance is basically a consumer-facing company. What do I mean by consumer-facing company? Bajaj Finance basically focuses on the NBFC element, which is in the lending space, right? So, if you want loans, EMIs, all that you see comes from the Bajaj Finance department. And Bajaj Finance basically has a total pool of five crore Indians. Now, what it does really well with these five crore Indians, it it does a lot of cross-selling, right? To the same five crore Indians, you will sell this product, this product, this product, and a different types of products as well. So that is why this company comes under the NBFC and in the fintech. Tech space now why is it so different we'll understand it slightly later next you come to bajaj finser what is bajaj finser now bajaj finser is actually the holding company of bajaj finance so bajaj finance comes below above that comes bajaj finser right now bajaj finser basically operates in the life insurance space it has different verticals but the main business comes from the life insurance department and general insurance so basically they have tie up with an alliance group so bajaj alliance life insurance is one part bajaj alliance general insurance is another part now they have also got permission to set up an asset management company which is amc from the sebi and it has given basically 500% returns in the last 5 years now obviously the bull run has also happened in the last 2 years so let's not count that as well so deeply but let's understand what it basically does so you understood right if you look at the other side bajaj fins uh, finance is basically in the nbfc space and the fintech space and the lending space if you look at bajaj finserv what they're doing is basically they have cards coming up which is the atm cards that you have bajaj finserv cards and they operate in the insurance space now let's go to the first company which is bajaj finance we'll do a proper sector overview now this company is basically in the retail sme home loan financing lot of different sectors bajaj finance is currently in so all your housing loans comes from bajaj finance now the company is divided into obviously different standpoints okay they have lot of nbfcs that are working on don't worry i'm going to share this with you so that it becomes easier for you to understand now if you look at how the business breakdown is happening this is how it looks like so bajaj holding and investment limited is the holding company of this company right now under this bajaj holding investment we have bajaj finserv which is bajaj finserv has two brackets one is alliance group and the life insurance and the general insurance group below that comes the bajaj finance department understood this much now Bajaj FinServ basically holds 52% stake in Bajaj Finance, 74% stake in both Bajaj Alliance and Bajaj General Insurance. This is mainly because in India you only allow 74% stake, right? The FDI rules are not very open yet for new players to come into the space, which is actually good because Indian players will do really well. Now, let me blow your mind a little bit. This is how the entire holding structure of Bajaj looks. I know it looks slightly confusing. It's okay, don't worry about it. So basically there's a company called Bajaj Holdings and Investment Limited BHIL which is listed. Then that has two companies which is Bajaj Auto which we know which is the automotive business of Bajaj again listed and then we have Bajaj FinServ okay which is listed. Now Bajaj FinServ is broken down into Bajaj Finance which is a listed company and Bajaj Finance is basically the lending services arm which is the lending business arm. They have Bajaj Housing Finance and Bajaj Securities comes under Bajaj this under Bajaj Finance and Bajaj Finance comes under Bajaj FinServ. So FinServ is like the main thing which has all the finance services and housing department they put it separately right lending part and if you look at on the other side bajaj finserv also has the two partners which they have the life insurance and the general insurance i know it looks slightly confusing but it's okay let's try to break down what bajaj finance does now okay so they do very quickly a lot of things personal finance rural lending mortgages sme lending commercial lending and loans against securities now las as they call it right now let me show you something here right if you look at bajaj finance right now first thing it is at a market cap of 3 lakh 54000 crores quite big stock piece trading at 55 rupees if you look at the max chart that is there it is a consistent compounder over a long period of time if you look at the 3 year chart also it has given good dividend returns if you look at the 1 year chart it has not done really well why because in the last one year we're in the correction mode but if you look at the 5 year chart, which is a good judge of character this looks really well now if you look at where are they lending so i'm just going here and showing you the revenue mix right so if you look at this where they're lending they're lending 91% of their lending happens to the salaried income group right very small amount 5% goes to the self employed and only 4% goes to the other category now let me zoom in a bit 
And if you look at their uh, AUM breakup portfolio for lending, which is the NBFC lending space, most of it is in the mortgage department, some of it in the consumer B2C segment, and then we have SME lending. So this basically takes up the entire pie. You want to know where it is? If you click on the source, it takes you here, right? So this is the entire breakup of where different places that currently are lending as well. So this is what is happening right here. Okay, I'm just showing you a quick breakup. Now, if you look at something that is important here, the cost to borrowing is 6.7. This is the cost that they get to borrow, right? And they obviously, they get 6.71 and obviously they borrow at a slightly higher rate. And there we have the net interest margin coming in as well, which when we go directly deep into the financials, at that point, we will look at it, right? So this is a massive thing to look at. Uh, it might get confusing, but I'm just brushing over the uh, big stuff so i don't want you to get too overwhelmed with all of that i'm just talking to you about the main stuff that is actually important okay now coming back so that we don't get too confused or else we will definitely get confused now if you look at bajaj finance bajaj finance is basically a growth machine okay it has been growing consistently the aum which is assets under management has been growing really well the gnpa which is the lending that they do and the bad debts that come in is very low that is why the gnpa you will see is low at 1.4 to 1.7 their nnpa um, which is net non performing asset is even low at 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 so all in all bajaj finance just put it in your head is like a growth machine right does really well and obviously helps them a lot as well now, if you look at the AUM growth of 14 years, screw five years, let's look at 14 years. If you look at the 14 year chart, look at this on the top, right? If you look at from FI 13, 17,000 crores, 24,000, 32,000, 42, 60, 82, 115, 147. Just look at the growth. This is, that's why I said this is a growth machine because this has been growing quite significantly and you will see the growth coming from FI09. Now in the future, the growth should be even higher. Why? Because now India is going into a very, fintech universe where lending is going to become very easy and you know this right it's very easy for you to go get pre-approved loans right now you do a lot of lending you take a lot of emis all of that come into this and if you see the income from operation uh Kager is also at 37 percent is that assets under management growth which is insane right with a very low npa which is the most important thing to understand now what are the key drivers of growth right why is it growing Mainly the reason why it's growing is because customer acquisition numbers are really good. That means they're acquiring new customers on a quarter on quarter basis. That is again good. AUM growth is happening. Net interest margin is good and the NPA is low. So they're losing money very less, but they're gaining money a lot. So that means they're lending to the right group, right? Now, if you look at the risk to upside and risk to downside, please have a look at the risks as well, because what happens is if the cost of funds increases and if the cost of borrowing goes up, then it becomes a small problem for the banks because their margins will start going down. The margins go down, they will push it back on you. Next comes Bajaj FinServe. Okay, let's quickly understand what Bajaj FinServe does. Now, Bajaj FinServe is basically into asset management, wealth management, life insurance, general insurance, very quickly, right? Now, they have something known as a new app. So, they're very gung-ho about this new insurance app that they're currently bringing and their entire focus right now is on the insurance app. I would say they're slightly little late to the party because a lot of other companies uh, have already come into the space. So, they're slightly late to the party right now. But if you look at the BAF consumer app, they're very excited because they want six-in-one checkout offering payment checkout offering again all this is already there but the only advantage that they have is because of the new app their customer acquisition rate is going to increase number one because now they'll focus all that energy on getting more users to the app and also that conversion rate becomes better because if you're on the app i can keep spamming your notifications right they're also getting rbi license for to become a payment aggregator and a bill pay operating unit as well which is bharat so basically what they're going to do is they're also going to become an aggregator and they're going to leverage all the UPI, PPI, EMI card, credit card, all of this infrastructure. So basically, if you look at it from this perspective, yeah, finance, Bajaj Finance looks very sexy, whereas this looks, hmm, okay, this is fine. But if you look at what they're doing, basically, this is the app, right? It looks very, very, very confusing. But the payment infrastructure is on top. The network infrastructure, you don't need to know. Marketplace is there, which is your no-cost EMI, insurance marketplace, investment marketplace, DMAT and broking, all comes under this department. Right. And then all your no, no cost EMI, where does it go? Consumer durables, mobile, lifestyle, tech products. So all of these things come here as well. Right. So I'm not going to go too deep into it. It'll take too long for me to cover that. But for you just to understand this now. If you look at, they have two types of services, Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance and Bajaj Alliance General Insurance. Now, for a lot of people who don't know what life in general is, life is mainly for your life, which is your term loan insurances. General insurances is what companies usually take, like fire insurances, uh, liability insurance, director insurance, a lot of weird, weird things that they take, uh, which is also there, right? Now, coming to the business model, as I said, they have life insurance, they have general insurance. Apart from that, they also have retail financing. They get some amount from retail financing. They also operate with windmills. Okay, they get some investments there and they have other investments. Now, before I go to this, let me show you Bajaj FinServe's growth. 
and chart. Now see, Bajaj FinServ is at 1,90,000 crores. Okay, market cap. Lower than Bajaj Finance. Even though this holds Bajaj Finance, this is slightly lower than Bajaj Finance. Interesting, right? Now, five-year graph, if you look at it, again, doing really well. Ten-year graph, again, consistent compounder. Um, let's look at, um, what was I doing? Yeah, one sec. Let's go down. Actually, not here. Let's go to this place. Okay. Now, if you look at 1,89,000 crore market cap, PE at 41, let's go down and look at the uh, life insurance gives them 43% revenue. General insurance actually gives them 56% of the revenue, right? So very interesting to understand that as well. Uh, where they do it, each of it in agri loans is something that they do well. Motor insurance is also they do well. Health, Okesh, Okesh Group Health is doing uh, much better than actually health because why companies will take a massive group health uh, thing from here, right? Now, uh, let's look at their financials really quickly if we can. Okay. So this is how the growth looks. Now, if I actually have the Bajaj finance chart put here as well, just so that you can see the comparison in the last five years, you will see that the chart mimics each other, right? It is almost the same, but obviously Bajaj finance is doing better than Bajaj FinServ, but Bajaj finance is mimicking the chart of Bajaj FinServ. We mimic each other's chart, which is basically almost the same. And if you look at that ROE and ROC in the last few years has been doing really, really, really well. Okay. So don't worry about that. Now, if you look at Bajaj FinServ, this is what they have, right? 74% in this Bajaj Finance, Bajaj FinServ Asset Management. They have a mutual fund operations as well. And if you look at the revenues, most of it comes from life insurance. Some of it comes from general insurance. And if you look at the other type of income that come, they get other income here as well, which is your dividend income, interest income, and all the other income. Sale of energy gen generated services from your windmill department. All of that comes here. Now, coming to the final question. What is better, Bajaj Finance or Bajaj FinServ? Let's look at this, right? Now, if you look at Bajaj Finance's top line revenue growth, massive growth, 10,000 crores, 13,000, 18,000, 26,000, 26,000, 26,000, and then 26,000, and then obviously now much better, right? And if you look at Bajaj FinServ, they have also grown massively, 24,000 to 60,000, massive Kager, 9,000 to 26,000, massive Kager in the last five years. Both of them are growing really fast. If you look at bottom line growth, similar story. That means, is it safe to say that even though Bajaj Finance is like the revenue machine or the growth machine, Bajaj FinServ is also not that bad, even though Bajaj Finance stock price goes up more than FinServ, right? But what do we do? What is better? Now, Bajaj Finance is at a market cap of around four, three point whatever. By the time I made this, it became three point, right? Because the market corrected. But if you look at both the market caps, they're at a one and a half lakh crore difference, right? Number one. Number two is that the FDI limit in the sector has gone up to 74%. That is number two. Number three, what we can also see that in India, the insurance sector is not yet penetrated fully. It is still growing. It has to grow much more. And when that happens, we can see a lot of room for growth. But then if you tell me, Shashank, what about Bajaj Finance? Finance, isn't there room for growth there? Yes, there is room for growth there as well in Bajaj Finance because that lending business is also growing. But Bajaj Finance is already almost double the market cap of Bajaj FinServ. Now, Bajaj FinServ has a 52% stake in Bajaj Finance. So if Bajaj Finance automatically does well, Bajaj FinServ will also automatically do well. So that means Bajaj FinServ has a more chance to actually grow even though the market doesn't replicate that but from an upside potential if finance does well automatically 50 percent of that revenue sorry 50 percent of that advantage goes to finserv as well and finserv is also growing so what we can deduce from all of this is if you'd ask me my take finserv is currently a company that is trading at a much better valuation compared to bajaj finance and i think finserv is a better bet to take again this is not my recommendation. I'm just doing what is good, what is bad. You have to do your own research before investing. I am not suggesting you to buy this, right? Now, if you calculate the market cap of Bajaj FinServ, which is the holding company, it's 52% of Bajaj Finance, 74% of Alliance Life Insurance, 74% of General Insurance, and that is actually more than the market cap of Bajaj FinServ. There's a 10% holding company discount as well, but even if you capture all of that, it looks really well. Now, if you ask me, Bajaj Twins are definitely value driven companies. Now, Bajaj Finance is basically a growth investor would invest in because it's a high growth company and value investors would closely look at Bajaj FinServ. So depending on what type of investor you are, right? It depends on how you would want to take a call on this, right? Because both of the companies are pretty good. Now look at Bajaj one more. Remember the first company I showed you, which is Bajaj Holdings and Investments. See the irony of this. Bajaj Holdings and Investment, which holds everything, right? Is actually at a market cap of 52,000 crores. But if you look at it, this is also a consistent compounder giving a lot of dividends. Very weird. But obviously the growth here is not as fast as the growth there. But actually, I mean, you can't say anything. It's still growing at 4x, 5x. But Bajaj as a whole, is doing really well and that is something that you should definitely look at okay coming back 
so guys i hope i hope i could make this very easy for you guys to understand now i hope it's clear just doing a quick summary recap finance is in the lending space nbfc lending all of that finserv is in the uh, alliance sorry finserv is in the life insurance and the general insurance space also coming up with their amc and wealth management services with their cards with their emis and their beautiful app that is coming out soon right this is not a sponsored video so please don't think this is a sponsored video this is just a simple comparison of bajaj finance versus bajaj finserv for a value investor finserv is a better option for a growth investor bajaj finance would be a better option but again this is just my analysis i might be completely wrong with this so i want you guys to do your own analysis and i want you to put in the comments below what do you guys think is better bajaj finance or bajaj finser okay and also i want you guys to tell me do you want any more comparisons in the future put in the comments below if you like the comparison like this i can do many more things like geo versus airtel and a lot of other things right so let me know in the comments below this is me shishankar rupa signing off take care see you guys bye